Hi, my name is Pietro Colella. I received my PhD in Electrical Engineering from Politecnico di Torino in March 2016 under the supervision of Professor Riccardo Tommasini. Now I am a research assistant at the Energy Department of Politecnico di Torino, working in the Power Systems Group. My field of research is electrical safety. One of the main goals of my research is to improve electrical standards. For this reason, it's clear that my field of research, the electrical safety, has a strong impact on people's everyday life. In this presentation, I'll shortly expose some of the main key concepts of my PhD research, which focused on touch voltage in MV systems and, in particular, provides elements to identify a global earthing system. Here you can see the outline of my presentation. First of all, I'll introduce the main concepts linked with the global earthing system, named GES. Then I'll explain you one of the main effects of a GES, which is the NV ground fault current distribution, and I emphasize the key results of my research. Let's start with the definition of global hurting system. International standards define a GES as an equivalent hurting system created by the interconnection of local hurting systems that ensures, by the proximity of the hurting systems, that there are no dangerous touch voltages. Moreover, they yet firm that Such systems permit the division of the earth fault current in a way that results in a reduction of the earth potential rise at the local earthing system. Such a system could be said to form a quasi-equipotential surface. Two main effects of a GES come out from its definition. The first one is the division of the earth fault current among the interconnected earthing systems. The second is that a GES form a quasi-equipotential surface. However, even if standards provide a GES definition, they do not give any practical guidelines to identify it. The result is that only few GES are certified. Whereas, if a clear procedure is provided, it will be possible to save time and money with a great benefit for both user and MV distribution system operator. For this reason, the Casa Conguaglio per il settore elettrico founded a research project called MeterClub to overcome this lack. The MeterClub project involves four universities, which are Politecnico di Torino, Politecnico di Bari, Università di Palermo, Università di Roma La Sapienza, and two companies, IMQ, Istituto Italiano del Marchio di Qualità, and Enel Distribuzione, the main Italian DSO. My PhD research was in the context of the MeterClub project and had, as main goal, to provide elements to identify a GES. As we have seen before, two main effects are linked with GES definition. But here, for the sake of brevity, I'll present you only the distribution of the earth fault current among the interconnected earthing systems, which, according to my research, can be considered the most relevant effect and has a greater impact on the electrical safety of a system. Imagine a single earthing system. If a fault occurs, the single line ground fault current must be entirely injected by the sole earthing system. Here, in red, you can see the earth potential profile on the soil surface. Vice versa, if several earthing systems are interconnected through, for example, MV cable shields, the fault current is divided among all these earthing systems. The potential profile on the cell surface, in this case, is represented by the blue line. Now, let me do a comparison between this scenario and the previous one, with only a single earthing system. Thanks to the reduction of the current injected by the faulty substation, the earth potential rise, that is the voltage between an earthing system and the reference heard while the hurting system is injecting the fault current into the soil is reduced, as well as the touch voltage. In order to quantify the phenomenon and evaluate the most relevant factors of influence, an analytical model of the components of a generic MV distribution system, as the one reported on the left of the slide, has been used for the simulation of a single line to ground fault. This model is very versatile, as the blocks describing the different components of the MV network can be assembled to represent the desired MV distribution system. Finally, the full model can be solved using the node method to calculate the currents in all branches and voltages in all nodes. To judge the effectiveness of the interconnection from the point of view of the current distribution among substation, ground grids and other paths, the ratio are equivalent on RE is used where R equivalent is the equivalent resistance seen by default current and RE is the ground grade earth resistance of default substation. It's possible to demonstrate that this ratio is equivalent to the ratio between the current injected into the soil through the earthing system of defaulted substation and the total fault current. The design ratio R is therefore a measure of the advantages achieved thanks to the interconnection of the substation ground grids. 
for the parametric analysis, simplify the distribution network layouts and different factors of influence, as the ones reported in the slide, are considered. According to the results of the simulations, default current reduction was always found remarkable. In many of the considered scenarios, just a few percent of the total fault current is injected into the soil through the acting system of the faulted substation. For more details, I invite you to read the article titled Impact of Medium Voltage Ground Fault Current Distribution on Global Earthing Systems, published on IEEE Transactions on Industry Applications. These results are also confirmed by field measurements which were performed on an NV distribution network, producing a real single line to ground fault and determining the fault current distribution in five NVLV substations, the are defaulted substation and the four neighboring ones. In each of the five substations, a new potential node was formed connecting the NV cable sheets and the hurting conductor together in the same location to enable the installation of current clamps. In the test, the measured total fault current was about 206 amps. However, thanks to the interconnection among earthing systems, in the earthing system of the faulted substation, only 12 amps were injected. For the sake of brevity, I can't go into a detailed description of the field measurement, but you can find it in the paper cited in this slide. Now, let's go to the conclusion. In my PhD work, we were able to prove the strong reduction of the current injected into the soil by the earthing system of the faulted substation identifying the main factors of influence. Both analytical simulations and field measurements were considered to provide a proposal for a practical guideline to identify global earthing systems. This guideline, which I haven't presented in this video because it's the object of a new manuscript not yet published, is based on a simplified analytical model to compute the reduction factor. So we arrived at the end of this short presentation of my PhD work. I hope that I was able to convince you on the importance of this research activity. Please, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Thanks for your attention.